what your opinion on that was. Um, board members, any upcoming or recent events to treatment? Okay. I don't know why they have chicken grits. There's really not any. The budget year just started. We had our first meeting uh, last week, so there's really no details or anything to, to talk about the, the upcoming budget. Okay. I think that's just a standard item. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you want to discuss the SOMAR report? Yeah, if anybody has any questions, we passed out the, uh, the SOMAR. This is the uh, previous month that we always uh, put out. So. Uh, important points uh, to note, I think, is our uh, live release rate, uh, and that says annual, but we all know that's monthly, that's for the period that, that we're looking at, is 85.3%. Uh, significant uh, October of 14 was 65%, so uh, that's up 20% uh, year to date. rest of it is uh, if, any, if there's any questions about anything that we've all looked and said. Okay. I think y'all were having a question about where the TNR show up and uh, the TNR show up is outgoing transfers because we transfer those uh, <coughs> to Panther City and then those caps are removed. So there were 199 uh, TNR cities that, uh, that came through in October. Are the which ones? Uh, out one transfer. Um, yes. Okay. Yes. Those, those are our true rescues through 501c3 partner organizations. What constitutes Donnie Lawson shelter care? Uh, it, it can be a, a variety of reasons. Uh, there are some uh, kittens that come in that are uh, too young and end up dying uh, when despite efforts to save them. Some of them that are too young and you know have injuries or that we know are not going to make it, then those are, are euthanized. Uh, but there are uh, you know, times when an animal will, will die uh, here without uh, being euthanized. But don't some of those fall under the dogs and cats euthanized but in through our no, category? No, those are not euthanized. The, the ones that, that are under the guide are, uh, we had uh, a couple of uh, uh, anesthetic deaths that was in uh, actually the last day of the month, so those would be on here. Uh, so uh, those would be included. don't have it right here. Uh, it, our levels were up about uh, 1,800 from fiscal year to fiscal year. So we're on an uptrend, which I know the, the goal is for shelter intakes to be down, but we're in a position where we need to be getting as many dogs off the street as possible. So we'll make a concerted effort with our stray team so our, our intakes uh, are actually up. Now, to go along with that, our return to owners in the field, which is something we've made a, a real effort at, are up like 80% uh, year over year because we're, we're having our, you know, we don't want them to come into the shelter, so we want them to, you know, ask around if they see somebody and try to figure out how we can get those animals back uh, to their owners and then educate them about, uh, you know, uh, letting their dogs at at large or uh, resources they may have for fencing and those kind of things. How do you see it? Sometimes I wonder, it seems like the shelter's intake decreases or increases, and how do they straighten that stuff? Right, that, that's, 
that's not the case here. And this was actually uh, a lot of our live release intake. Is associated with, uh, or our live release rates are associated with our TMR program. Uh, really kicked off in November of, of 14. So that, that's uh, one of the reasons that we've got a 20%. We're certainly not running every month at 20% year to date uh, increase. But, uh, it's paid us significantly. We had a, a, a very successful event. That's our largest uh, event that's just us that we do every year. Um, and uh, oh. Diane handed me those numbers. And I, I want to say we had 204 adoptions over that uh, weekend period, and that's uh, here at the shelter and Jay tracks that, and I don't know the most current, but we were running um, within the last two or three weeks post that, so we were close to three weeks out. We were running about 7%, uh, which is, is pretty comparable to what we run. Um, Well, I can't talk. It, it's it's an ongoing criminal case, so I can't get into any of the details. Yeah. I can talk about yeah. uh, in general, um, you know, uh, you know the, the police, you know, are going to not look favorably on anybody that takes someone else's pet, regardless of what reason that is, and then on top of that, refuses to return the pet, even when instructed to do so by the police. Um, and so, um, without getting into the specifics of that particular case, uh, we do have a new detective that is uh, working with uh, the shelter, uh, and I think that's going to be a very good thing. He seems to be a very um, uh, energetic uh, and going to you know really work hard on, on a lot of our cases. But I can't get into. <coughs> Well, no, I mean, it, it takes more than just helping. I mean, th this is, it takes someone refusing to return a dog or uh, obviously going into property and, and taking them. You know, this was this was a strike I thought about that, it, that they I took in. And, and that's, you know, that that's one thing. Uh, people that enter other people's property and take their animals, you know, sure. that's certainly going to be a theft. Uh, but uh, if you find an animal and you're caring for it, that's a good thing. But then when the owner shows up and you refuse to. But didn't she just ask for, you know, just give me proof that this is your dog? I was, we, I mean, we got a, we had, <coughs> the neighbors found the dog. We put the sign in our yard because we were, we got the call. The guy was calling from Houston. Really? Anyway, he said, we didn't want the dog. We left the day, we left the day with him. Oh. Um, yeah, all I, I can say her, is. All I can say is that I think the, the police asked you to, and actually they they first talked to them about returning the dog to the, the gentleman that had, had described it, and then I think that uh, uh, finally they said, okay, take it to Fullworth Animal Care and Control, and that was refused. But, so it wasn't stolen from Hugh? No, no it, it, okay. was, it was a stray that was found <laughs> oh, on the street, and 
I'm talking a lot of specifics about a case I can't talk specifics about, but rest assured that people that are good Samaritans in doing the right thing and then continue to do the right thing but throughout what the process. Did we not do? I mean, if that, I mean, if the vet said the dog was 30 pounds underweight, and you know, didn't the owner have some? There, with, without getting into specifics, there are circumstances why someone might have an animal that's underweight, for instance. Someone may have, uh, you know, somebody could come into our shelter right now and I guess arrest me because we have animals here that uh, are underweight because that's how they come in. But this dog was out, running the street, whatever. I know he was dragging his chest. I, 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 I don't want to get into pictures. Okay. Okay. These pictures don't always like tell the whole story. Maybe well, let me, if, if I can, I'm not part of the committee, but I, I might be able to, my role tonight was, you know, on like on this case and a few other things, to, to make sure that everybody understands, you know, where, where, where I fit in the scheme of things as, as the director is, I have area, different area commands that I have, um, solid waste, code compliance, pollution control, um, health, and animal control. So each of those areas runs under an assistant director. And so if there's, there's any concerns about an assistant director, uh, they're a direct report to me. And so um, I would come and review their work or if there's an issue at a meeting, I would come to that meeting and see if I can clarify. 